part one of this tutorial is going to be the blender part and we will make this render with totally free assets. All right guys, so if you want this layout in Blender, all you have to do is go to the description and I'll have a blend file for you to open. It will be exactly this. When you open it, all you have to do is go file, defaults, save startup file. And every single time you open a new general file, you will get this automatically so you don't have to redo everything but you just go up here go to rendered and that will have your rendered view and this material is there as well and you just you can go here and you can change this out for any png cutout and it will be transparent um, if anyone wants to follow along you sign in and you go through the steps to get the polygon add-on in blender so you go to the website, you download it, you do not unzip it. So once you have the zip file in your downloads folder, you go to edit, you go to preferences, you go to add-ons, you go to install, downloads, and then the, you click, you double click on the zip file and install add-on. Okay, once you do that, you type in polygon and you can see you just click that and it will go over here. And if you don't see that, you just press in and polygon is right here. I'm gonna type free and all these are free to use. And if you go here, you can see what the licensing is. And it says, can I use the assets from the free section for commercial purposes? And it says, yes, you can. I'll delete these two. Shift A, Taurus. Frame selected keybind is Shift F. So on the left, if you see a capital, it's Shift. Um, and if it's lowercase, there's no Shift. These are the major and minor segments of the Taurus object shade smooth. Go to the modifier tab and add a subdivision surface. Add a cylinder and rotate it and scale it as you see fit. Add a cube. Uh, press tab to go into edit mode, control R to loop cut, select these vertices. And if you can't see the vertices, just press one. Just kind of scale that into place. All right, select a knife tool and go between these two, right click and same thing on the other side, then press enter. All right, select these vertices, right click, then merge at center. So on the back side, we're just going to select the vertices and scale it down. Go to edit preferences, add ons and put in loop tools. Make sure that's checked. Then you can right click, go to loop tools and press circle and it will make the mesh circular. All right, so in edit mode, I'm going to select the blade and right click subdivide. I'll select the kunai, press M, new collection, and I'm just gonna move that collection above the other collection. Okay, so I'll select the kunai again, shift D, escape, and move that to the side. I'll make this a brand new collection. I'll press Control J to join the mesh into one single mesh. Press in and go to the polygon tab. We'll type in free, go down to the correct material, add the material to the object, go to the material tab. We're gonna add a new material to that. Make sure you press three and select faces. Assign the new material to it. Make that a little bit darker. Go to the HDRI tab and add an HDRI to the world. 
right click set origin geometry to origin rotate that into place just kind of get a good view on the camera we can go into the mapping node and change the hdri go to this tab and press transparent to see the kunai better and continue to play around with the hdri Go into object mode and change it to the metal material. Shift A, hue and saturation into the base color. Reduce the value till it looks good. Press Z and down so we can see what the material is doing exactly. And just continue to go down on the value. And also on the other material, it was just too light. So I wanted to make it all consistent. Right now I'm gonna make the handle real quick and basically what it is, just a cube. And we're gonna to tab to edit mode, make sure we can select the edges, press A to select everything, then shift A to deselect one edge and X delete edges. Uh, make sure to go back out of edit mode, um, add a modifier, we're gonna do a screw modifier. If you go up, you can kind of see what it's doing. Iterations, put it right over that blade. I'm just gonna scale that way down. Just gonna make sure that it's in there good. Going to add a solidify. Just gonna kind of make it really thick over here. Now I'm going to add a subdivision surface. I'm going to shade smooth as well. Just try to make this look as best as I can. Okay, so for this material, I'm gonna press N and I'll just use the fabric plane. Okay, so this is way too bright for me personally. So I'm going to add a hue and saturation to the base color, bring down the value quite a bit. That's looking good in the render. So I'll go ahead and keep that. All right, so this is what I came up with in the end. It's uh, this scale, these settings, and that it might be different for you guys. So you can just see whatever looks good for you. For the string, we're gonna do a circle with 24 vertices and it's 0 0.2 radius. We're gonna go into tab mode, make sure we can see the vertices. Um, just gonna go to top, make sure that's in the center here. Up here, go vertex and turn that on and active element on this one. So shift D, just gonna put this like this, shift click that, shift click it again, and move that, and it's just gonna snap to that. That way we can get it perfectly aligned. Okay, shift D to this one, and shift, shift, and it'll snap into place. Now I'm gonna turn that off, delete all these vertices in the center, just X vertices. Press A, press M by distance, and now it will be one. Press tab, right click, set origin, geometry to origin. So now it's in the center. So now I'm gonna add a screw modifier, put that at one meter, and also flip the normals. I will object shade smooth. Now we shift A, curves, bezier, and now we're gonna select this. We're gonna add a curve and the curve can be the bezier and that curve should be on the z-axis now we're gonna do a array modifier all right so i'm gonna move the array and make sure the factor is on z and then we're gonna merge it right here now I'll select the curve press tab to go to edit mode i can just press e to extrude these vertices further along. So for the array, just I'm gonna go in here and increase the count. Select everything over here and move it over here. Scale it down way, way down. This doesn't have to be super perfect or anything. Um, but yeah, I just want it to be a realistic size. And I'm kind of just looking at the render, see what looks good. 
All right, so for this texture, I wanna use the same texture as this. So we'll go to fabric shear, but I'm going to make a new one. So I press this and it makes a new one. And for this one, I'll increase the value a little bit extra. So it's a little bit different. All right, now for the tag. Uh, so I'm just gonna shift A and mesh plane. Kind of make it the size of the tag. I'm gonna tab, right click, subdivide, subdivide subdivide and a subdivide add modifier we're gonna do a wave if you press play you can kind of get something going here uh, so i just want it on the x-axis and i'm gonna do something like this i will apply that and add a new material for this i'm gonna drag and drop the texture onto it I'm going to tab i'll just unwrap it so u unwrap Scale it on the Y axis and just kind of fit it into place as best as I can. All right, so since it's upside down, I'm going to go into edit mode and rotate that by 180. All right, so I don't want any specular on there, so I'll reduce that. So for the roughness, I'm going to add a noise texture and a color ramp. Put that into the roughness and control shift to click on that to see what it's doing. Um, I'll object shade smooth. So everything's smooth on here. Increase the color ramp. So we'll see what this is doing. And as you guys can see, there's a little bit of roughness on there. We go to a modifier and add a solidify. Increase this subdivision surface as well. All right, so I'll have it on a uh, on this setting with three and above the solidify. All right, um, so in order for this to have a cool looking emission on it, I'm going to add a noise texture and a color. I'm just gonna duplicate this, Shift D, and put that into the emission. Here, I will do a orange color, and the strength, I'm just gonna turn it up really, really high. Kinda do something like this. Just kinda play around till it looks kinda cool. Okay, so I want the letters to also glow. So in order for me to do that, I'm gonna have to duplicate this material and I'm going to duplicate this plane as well. I also made a black and white version of this image. So I'm gonna do the color into the alpha. And as you can see, this is what's happening. This, I need this one to have a material two, and then this one needs to be material three. And then I will plug this into the alpha. And I'm just gonna change this around as well. It's looking pretty good. I'll just go over top the initial one I had. And then we're gonna just slightly go up and that will reveal the letters. So I'm going to put this into a new collection. Now we can start playing with the composition. All right, so first of all, I'm just going to add a cube and increase the size and I will make a new material next to delete that. And I'll put in a volume scatter node. Put that into the volume and just increase that. Reduce this by 0 0.005. Okay, so here I'm gonna go to the visibility tab viewport, change that to bounds. Just gonna increase this actually quite a bit more. Now we're gonna see what Polygon has for their free models. See what we can do what this is about. Okay, let's see. See what this is like. I wanna make sure that my horizon is accurate. So I'm gonna move the camera instead. Kind of move that into place. Just gonna kind of play around here. 25 millimeters. Kind of want like a cool environment. And this rock is just kind of. I'm gonna duplicate it and rotate it. Um, the HDRI. Not sure if I want to use it. Let's see if I can just put a spotlight. Let's see what this does. Okay. Density up just a little bit. 0 0.007, radius of 0 0.5. I'll go and make the hue a little bit blue. Um, 
just gonna turn off the saturation so I can get exactly the color I kind of want. Then reduce the saturation quite a bit. I just need to find a better composition maybe with the lighting situation. I'm going to add a new plane and copy the rotation on the camera. I will scale this up quite a bit. I'm gonna make it go way back. Okay, so a new texture on this. Put that into the color and into the emission. So now I can just kind of play around with this. I think I'm gonna make the camera 1920 by 1080. So this sky plane, I'm just gonna shift D, put that over here to give a little bit more light. All right, so another cool thing we can try to do here is a empty plane axis. And bring this over here to this because um, I think this is gonna be the focal point. I'm gonna try to get this exactly on here and I will click the camera, go to the camera tab over here, depth of field, and I'm just gonna press this object empty, the F stop, I'm gonna try one. Okay, I'm gonna make the blade seven, 0 0.5 maybe. Let's try this stump here. Maybe since this has depth of field, it can be used as some kind of environment. Just shift D to move this around a little bit. Some variation over here. I think that can be pulled off as some kind of rocky environment. <laughs> All right, shift A and add a point to light. Just look multiple importance. Okay, I just kind of want to put this behind here. Let's just go down to 50 watts. So this is just a basic texture with an emission and a noise texture into a color ramp into the alpha. I'll put a modifier on it and I'll do subdivision. Object shaved smooth. So the emission is definitely way too high. Maybe even the value at three. Just gonna go ahead and add a curves. So I wanna go to the base color and put it in a hue, saturation, reduce the value here quite a bit. All right guys, so I'm going to do mine at 200%. You guys can do it at 100% uh, with any resolution that you want to. Um, you can be as creative as you want to with the composition, but this is what I'm gonna do personally. Yeah, so in render, what I like to do is uh, just have these settings. I'm gonna do 100 samples because I'm going to use denoising with the Optic X and Albedo and Normal. So if you, do, if you don't want to use denoising, I would suggest doing a very high sample count uh, or you're going to get noise and you'll just waste all your time. I'm personally going to use denoising because I'm going to take it into Photoshop and add some, some extra stuff to it, some grunge to it, uh, some extra lighting and yeah. Uh, so yeah, you just do that. Um, I usually just check transparent and also in here i uncheck compositing and sequencer because i don't need that and i do rbga for the transparency so like if you want to just this as a cutout a png cutout you do rbga and transparency or transparent right here so i just leave all those on anyway and then compression 80 percent and right here you just go to render render image and your computer starts rendering. 